Hi, uh, everyone. I'm Dr. Mridul Dua, and I've done my MD in anesthesia. And following that, I've done a fellowship in pediatric anesthesia. I'm currently practicing as a junior consultant pediatric anesthesiologist at Bhai Jarbhai Wadia Hospital for Children in Mumbai. And today I'll be talking about uh, NORA in pediatric patients, NORA being non-operating room anesthesia in pediatric patients. So without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, so this is a roadmap of the topics that I'll be discussing. I'll first be introducing NORA in pediatric patients to you. Uh, followed by the various locations where pediatric anesthesia is required outside of the operating room. Then what are the various challenges while giving anesthesia to kids outside of the OD? What are the various prerequisites when it comes to the patient, staff and equipment? Uh, how should one, up, uh, one come up with a perioperative plan and go about the anesthesia management? Followed by the key considerations in NORA spaces, such as the CTMRI suite, endoscopy suite, cat lab, or the dental chair. And then we'll be discussing about how one goes about treating the patient after the procedure is done. And then there will be a take-home message. And I assure you that once you, you are done with this lecture, you'll all be able to say with confidence that... We are pediatric anesthesia. Our patients don't cry during CT and MRI. Right. Okay, so what is NORA? Administration of sedation or anesthesia to patients undergoing painful or uncomfortable procedures at off-site locations is called non-operating room anesthesia or remote location anesthesia. With an advent of medical technology, there has been a steady rise in the number of diagnostic and interventional procedures being performed outside of the operation theater. NORA is frequently required for extremes of age. So what I'm trying to say is that adults, uh, which are uh, from the age of about 18 years old to about 60 or 70 years old, usually do not need anesthesia outside of the OT for procedures such as a CT or an MRI. But it is these extremes of age, for instance, the children, pediatric patients or the geriatric patients that often require anesthesia in a NORA setting. These anesthesia requirements can range from something as minimal as monitored anesthesia care to full general anesthesia. Pediatric NORA is a kind of anesthesia where the risk is at the highest and because of this particular age group, the, there is a very low tolerance for error. So what are the various locations where NORA services are needed for pediatric patients? The first and the most common one being the CT and MRI suites. So here you can see these pictures. There's one on the left. There is a child undergoing a CT scan under sedation. And then this pink image that you see, that is our MRI suite. Uh, the reason why this is uh, looking a little blurred is because these pictures have been taken from outside of the MRI suite since I can't take my phone inside. Then you might require uh, to give anesthesia to pediatric patients for endoscopy in the endoscopy suite. Then comes the, catheteriz the catheterization lab, dental chair, burns patients in burns units, and then patients that are undergoing, one second, uh, excuse me. Patients that are undergoing chemotherapy or radiotherapy in radiotherapy and chemotherapy units. Here you might require to give anesthesia to kids for procedures such as pick line insertions or uh, chemopot insertions, or even for procedures such as bone marrow aspiration. Very rarely, and the last two are the ultrasound suite and mental health units for electroconvulsive therapy. But the mainstay of today's discussion will be giving anesthesia to kids in the CT and MRI suite, the endoscopy suite, catheterization lab, and the dental chair, because these are the locations where NORA services for pediatric patients are most commonly required. Okay, so what are the various challenges when it comes to giving anesthesia to kids outside the OT? The first and foremost challenge is that there is a wide variety of anatomical and physiological variations in pediatric patients. Clearly, uh, children are not small adults. 
their physiology and anatomy is vastly different from that of adults, as is their psychology. And because pediatric age group is an age group that starts right from the neonatal period up to 18 years of age, as the child grows, his psyche changes too. So you need to kind of tailor make a plan based on the patient, the patient's age, as well as the procedure. Then communication with kids can be quite a challenge. Uh, for instance, if you have like a 25-year-old guy who needs a CT scan, you can just tell him to lie in the CT console with his eyes closed and you can tell him don't move. And this is going to be over in about 15, 20 odd minutes and he's going to listen to you. But if you have a four-year-old child, he's not going to be as cooperative and you might actually need to sedate this particular child for a procedure as simple as a CT scan. Then in these normal locations, you often have various complicated cases. Uh, just to name a few, uh, children that have congenital cardiac diseases can come for CTPA. And that is essentially, they'll just come after a 2D echo and their exact uh, pathology of the disease is not known. So you're dealing with a patient with an undiagnosed pathology in a setting which is outside of the operation theater. So that is clearly a really complicated case. Then there are patients uh, in the endoscopy suite. Often these patients have severe liver disease. So that is another very challenging set of patients that you might have to give anesthesia to outside of the OT. The next challenge is that there is often a lack of trained personnel. So just take, for instance, you're in the operation theater and you have any kind of an emergency. What might happen is that if there is an emergency in the operation theater, anybody in the OT can be asked for help. It doesn't necessarily need to be an anesthetist. Uh, someone who is a nurse or even a ward boy will be able to assist you in case of an emergency in the operation theater because they're used to seeing all of these things. They're familiar with the equipment. They're familiar with your problems. But outside of the operation theater, say in the endoscopy suite, the nurses and the other uh, staff are not as trained to handle anesthesia emergency. So that too can be quite a stiff challenge. And then, of course, there is this problem that uh, Nora is outside of the operation theater. It is often at a great distance from the operation theater and help that is expert help from another anesthesiologist may not be very readily available. Then another great problem in Nora's sense is that often these suites are designed without very anesthesia in mind. And we find that the equipment old, outdated, or poorly functioning. Then there are equipment limitations, such as those in the MRI suite, because often you'll not have monitors that are MRI compatible. You'll not have an anesthesia machine, which is MRI compatible. Then there is this problem of limited access to the patient. It's very evident in a situation such as a CT scan or an MRI, because the patient is inside the CT console, you'll not have access to the head end of the patient. And then there can be problems with establishing protocols. So uh, these appointments for CT scans and MRIs are taken by non-medical staff. So these clerks often don't know what are the fasting guidelines or what kind of preoperative investigations you might require. So this can be quite a long drawn process where you're trying to train these people to establish protocols in a non-operating room setup, especially while giving anesthesia to pediatric patients. Right, okay, so this is just an example of what Nora for a pediatric patient can look like. So here I had an eight-year-old child and he is undergoing an ERCP procedure in the endoscopy suite. And all of these people that you see in lead gowns, they are all gastroenterologists and pediatricians. Not one of them is an anesthesiologist. The only anesthesiologist here was actually me. And I'm the one taking the picture and I'm standing at the foot end of the patient.